1000 UG trip. What could possibly go wrong? An LSD trip report from trippingly.net. The come up. My friends had varying experience of LSD. One friend, who will be called John, had tripped a total of seven or so times. Another, Dave, a single time, actually two days before this trip. And the other, Kelly, was dropping for the first time for a birthday. The day seemed all too perfect for anything to mess up, despite the fact that during this time in my life, I had a myriad of personal issues and insecurities that could lead to bad experiences. I'm starting to get slightly uneasy even thinking about the experience I'm about to describe. Around 3.30pm, my friend Kelly picked me up from my house. Dave was also in the car. We drove to another friend's house where my personal stash of acid was sitting in the freezer. The LSD was then dropped onto sugar cubes. Our plan was to drive to yet another friend's house and enjoy the ride in a safe setting. I walked into his house and saw a couple of my friends there. We briefly conversed and smoked a bowl of top quality CBD rich sativa marijuana, an antipsychotic chemical that is in marijuana that reduces anxiety. We did this for a few minutes as a way to ease me into the trip. I pulled a whopping seven sugar cubes out of the freezer and shoved them in my mouth, then licked a bunch of sugar crumbles off the foil which came from the edges of the 15 sugar cubes I had in my stash. This was a total of around 1000 micrograms. My friends were a bit shocked I was willing to go that far, but they already were aware of my tendency to consume large quantities of psychedelics. I talked with them for another 10 minutes or so and then I went back to the car. On my way to the car I noticed I was starting to feel increasingly disoriented. It wasn't that euphoric, confusing sort of disorientation. It was more of a, I'm losing my fucking mind sort of thing. I felt slightly anxious but I assumed the negative feelings would pass as soon as the acid took full effect. A couple minutes after I got in the car, Dave ate two sugar cubes and Kelly ate one. The experience was about to get very, very ugly. To give you guys a little perspective on the unfathomable effects of 1000 microgram doses, here is a quote from the Nobel Prize winning chemist Carrie Mullis, who ingested 1000 micrograms for his first dose. When you take a thousand micrograms of LSD, you don't know you've taken anything. It just feels like that's the way it is. You might suddenly find yourself sitting on a building in Egypt 3000 years ago, watching boats on the Nile. Yes, it is that crazy. 10 minutes into the car ride and 20 minutes after eating the sugar cubes, I was rapidly losing all touch with reality. I started wondering what was going on around me and why I was feeling so uncomfortable. I started telling my friends I was really scared and the intense anxiety was gripping every single fibre of my body. I thought I was going to die and that this trip was going to last until the end of eternity. By the minute I was starting to panic more and more. This was only the beginning of an unimaginable nightmare that would show me the dark side of LSD and completely changed my opinion about the drug in general. 25 minutes after taking the sugar cubes, we arrived at GAC's house. By that time I was stumbling all over the place and I was already having severe visual distortion. All movements were followed by strobing trails composed of detailed patterns, kaleidoscopes and rainbows. These visuals that I would have usually considered beautiful were now viewed as a reminder that I was in the middle of a trip that I so desperately wanted to end. When I got inside his house, I saw a few more of my friends sitting on the couch. My body temperature had elevated to the point I thought I was burning alive. I was completely out of my body and almost felt like I was in a high dose of ketamine. I felt embarrassed because I obviously looked like I couldn't handle my shit. Maybe this was just an extreme amplification of my general self-esteem issues. The faces were assuming demonic forms. I fled to JAC's room. I was already starting to experience ego loss, and I was going in and out of consciousness. This is the point where I lost track of time, so there is no point of trying to estimate anything. JAC followed me to his room and did his best to comfort me and talk me out of my bad trip. 
it was a completely ineffective attempt. A couple minutes later, I started crying hysterically. Everything was getting darker. I fell into the most depressive state of my life, combined with the most acute sense of panic I've ever experienced. The floor was covered in spiralling kaleidoscopes that were rapidly shifting colours. I heard thousands of voices call me names like pussy and bitch. The room reeked of sewage and feces. This was the most negative emotion a human being could ever fathom. I so desperately wanted to stop the trip, but I was immobilised and unable to move. I realised that the voices were all of the people I resented in my life the most. Cartoon blood was all over the ceiling and the walls. My vision seemed to stretch off into infinity. I was hallucinating so much I couldn't even believe it. I could see many different events of my life playing out as if it was a waking reality. Try and imagine being inside of a Saw movie first hand, but a thousand times more horrifying and traumatic. There was a moment in which my mind would shoot out my body two feet in front of me and then return back into it, and this looped over and over again for what felt like forever at an impossible speed. Time was non-existent, and a second felt like forever. Not hours, not days, but an infinite amount of time. I kept hearing this bizarre futuristic noise that sounded like a computer glitching. The whole room was flashing as if something was flicking the on switch for a lamp up and down repeatedly. My jaw was rapidly vibrating like I'd taken 300 milligrams of MDMA, I always get major jaw clenching from acid. I had full blown synesthesia as well. Everything was one. Everything was infinitely interconnected. I would look at the walls and become the walls. I would look at the floor and then become the floor as well, looking back at my body in a dissociative fashion. I was unable to differentiate any part of the outside world from my own physical body. The concept of I was now a mere construct of my mind, and I was nothing more than a complex bundle of atoms and molecules. Somehow, just a little while after this part of the trip, I regained some degree of consciousness. I stumbled to his backyard, where a group of eight or so people were sitting and I was watching the sky and everything in my external environment turning black and red. I could barely see anything. My vision was almost completely shot. I forget that I even had a body at this point and I had absolutely no control over my muscular movements. I was in this survival mode where my mind was on autopilot and had no idea that I was on drugs. I lost balance and fell backwards onto the ground. I continued to see more incredible vortexes of matrix style numbers and letters spurt out from every direction. During my friend's attempts to help restore me to sanity, they asked if I knew what time it was. I responded with 8am, when it was actually late in the afternoon. That was quite enough of a response to prove I was completely and utterly going nuts, and there was no real way to help me. Once night fell, I was full on peeking in JAC's room. I began to literally have no idea who I was, where I was, or what drug I was even on, or what drugs even were in the first place. I knew that I was going to die, and there was nothing that could be done to stop it. At some point at the beginning of the peak, I realised that I could not recognise the room I was in. Suddenly I started seeing several cop cars pull into the room and put the sirens on. Yellow caution tape magically appeared around them as well. This was one of my worst nightmares coming to life before my very eyes. There was a line of already arrested criminals in handcuffs next to the cop cars and they were all complaining that I had snitched on them for some unspecified reason. I knew I was in for absolute hell. Before I could see what was going to happen next, everything started fading to white. I could see nothing but burning white light, like I was looking directly at the sun from a hundred feet away. What I saw was the ultimate truth, the answer to every question. The reason reality is the way it is. I existed within the past, present and future simultaneously. I couldn't see my own hands in front of my face. 
I dissolved into infinity. I was existing in an infinite number of dimensions, living an infinite number of lives simultaneously for an infinite amount of time. Though my memory of this is hazy, I believe I relived every event of my entire life during the peak. I could fit our entire universe into a period at the end of a sentence. Time was a point of nothingness. I was everything, yet I was nothing. I was in pure ecstasy. I felt the unconditional love of the universe penetrating every pore of my body. If only this could have lasted forever. I suppose this was a taste of the beautiful part of ego death, but my stay in this ineffable place was cut short when I was suddenly catapulted into hyperspace, where I experienced every ounce of pain any human being could ever possibly experience at one time. The love had rapidly shifted to evil in its purest definition. I saw many miserable people I had seen throughout my life, including the homeless and starving. My brain's sensory filter was gone. Every last bit of information that could physically be processed at once was flowing through my head at light speed. I was dropped out of hyperspace directly into a hallucinatory prison facility. I saw hundreds of pit bulls, white supremacists and naked black men running around. It was a state of sheer pandemonium. I've never been so unbelievably horrified in my entire life. I was now sure that this is where I would die. I was taken to the showers where I was bitten repeatedly by pit bulls and raped by the white supremacists and black men simultaneously. I was sobbing hysterically, screaming for it to stop. It was physical and emotional torture beyond your wildest dreams. I felt every single sensation, including their penises in my anus and the razor-sharp teeth of the vicious dogs. Who knows how long this actually went on for, but eventually this torture ended and I was back in JC's room. I saw all of my friends' faces covered in knife wounds and deep, bleeding cuts. Puddles of blood were all over the room. My joints were still in severe pain from the physical torture I had just experienced. I looked at the clock and it read 9pm, or something along those lines. Minutes after I came back to Earth, I realised that the purpose for human existence was to love. Love is our higher purpose. I now understood that the ego I had developed my entire life was an illusion all along. Our egos push us away from our ability to feel compassion towards others. As your ego fades away, you slowly dissolve into pure, unadulterated love. The illusion of separation created by our egos has been the root cause of suffering all across our planet, and sadly this is the reason the majority of the world kills each other for absurd purposes like religion and resources. Religions like Christianity hide behind the idea that there is an afterlife because they are afraid of death. There is nothing to fear, because when you die there is no you to fear anything. The only thing that separates us from other forms of life is our ability to think. Our ego is composed of our thoughts. When we stop relying on our ego, we cannot experience negative emotions. When we stop thinking, our ego ceases to exist, and then we can live a life of pure love, peace and prosperity. The more we rely on our ego, the more we push ourselves away from the moment which is all. Nothing outside the moment we are in right now will ever exist. Yesterday never is, and tomorrow will never be. Time is infinite. The past, present and future are all occurring simultaneously. We are merely observers. Free will is an illusion. This was by far the most profound experience of my entire life. I quickly forgot all of those things within 15 minutes of the peak ending. I didn't fully understand the lessons I learned for until months had passed after the trip. The next day was easily the worst day of my life, excluding the trip. I felt so self-conscious about myself that suicide was all I could think about. I was thoroughly convinced that I had ruined my life permanently. During ego death I became aware of the severity of my many mental disorders. 
I realised that throughout my entire life, I had been looked down upon as the special kid. I had not been aware of this until that moment. I felt like the most inferior form of life on the face of the earth. After I got home, I burst into tears. I even thought my family felt sorry for me and had pitied me my whole life because they thought I was a moron. I had a psychotic break for weeks afterwards. This was easily the most traumatic thing I have ever gone through in my life and has left a lasting mark on me that I carry to this day. It's been over six months now and I think about this trip every day. It's nothing any human being ever deserves to go through and I would never wish it on my worst enemy. Over time, this trip has had a profound impact on all areas of my life, in both positive and negative ways. Positives. I have very close friends now, and rather than the special kid, many people now view me as a very insightful and intelligent person. Before this experience, I had very, very few friends. I wasn't close friends with the ones mentioned in this report, but we did chill every once in a while. I now know what true friendship really is. I meet new people all the time. I suspect I used to have a mild form of autism and this trip literally eradicated it. My entire family has mentioned multiple times that I'm a transformed person. I have fully developed social skills. I truly believe LSD is able to cure mental disorders and the scientific community needs to conduct research on this. I act normally now. I view everyone I meet as a part of my own consciousness, which lets me act much more empathetically. I've earned excellent grades at my community college and have grown tremendously. Multiple people have commented that I'm an entirely different person. I've taken up Buddhism and adopted a very spiritual lifestyle. In terms of negative impact, several months ago I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. I suspect I was already predisposed to this condition and the trip brought it out. I still have mental flashbacks nearly every day and have been scarred by this experience. I frequently have nightmares about this trip. My thoughts can be very scattered and clouded at times. My thinking is very impaired on some days, but it's very sporadic. I've learned how fucked up our world is, and sometimes I feel that ignorance is bliss. Our society disgusts me. I think that the human race is a joke. I'm going to say one thing. Do not take a high dose of acid unless you have a proper set and setting, or it can turn into the worst nightmare of your life. 300 micrograms is more than enough to have a spiritual experience. 1000 plus micrograms does not provide a near-death experience. It provides a beyond-death experience. Heed my warning. Don't make the mistakes I did. You are not invincible. LSD is a seriously powerful drug, and it has the ability to fuck you like nothing you could ever conceive of. In fact, after this experience, I firmly believe it is the most powerful drug known to the human race. I smoked 150 milligrams approximately of DMT at once, seven consecutive enormous hits and the intensity could not come close to what I described in this report. 